There we go. Yep, right off the structure again. This is insane, guys. Oh my gosh. Oh, I hope he doesn't break me off. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Orange 22 Fishing. If you're new here, my name is Dave. I make up one half of the channel along with my brother, Matthew. We put out fishing videos based here in the state of Delaware. Usually one or two videos a week, as many as we can possibly do. So we're gonna get into an exciting video today, reviewing and challenging ourselves with the Rapala Original Floating Minnow. This is a classic bait. It's been around absolutely forever. This is a, a classic lure that people like to use for trout, bass, crappie, uh, you know, any kind of fish that's out there really. People have used these lures for those fish. And uh, it's one of my personal favorite lures. It's one that I've been using for a few years now and I've had a lot of success catching large numbers of fish and big fish on these baits. So it's, uh, it's kind of a little series I'm starting here at the channel, just going through and reviewing and showing you guys some of my favorite baits and making little challenges with them. So that's what we're gonna do today. We got three different sizes, a small size, a medium size, and a large size. And we're gonna try to catch fish on all three sizes of these Rapala minnows today. So let me show you a little bit of what we're gonna be using right here. So here are our three baits for the day. We're gonna start off with the small one here. Actually not gonna use this color, but I'm just showing you the sizes right here. So we're gonna use this size right here. This is the F5 size. And uh, this particular bait right here has caught me a lot of fish. So many that it's actually broken. So we're gonna be using this same size, but in a perch color. We're gonna start off with that one. And we're gonna move on up to the F9. It's a little bit bigger here. You can see it in between the real big one and the small one. It's kind of like your medium size lure. And uh, this one is also not the color we're gonna use, but it's the same size. Uh, we're gonna use a silver uh, one of these in the F9. And this is the one that's gonna catch probably the most fish out of all of them. Uh, it's just great. You can catch small fish on it. You can catch big fish on it. You can catch medium fish on it. So this is the one that I like to use the most out of all three. And then you have your big one here. This is actually like probably five inches long, I think. I'm not sure exactly, but this is your big fish bait right here. It catches big bass, big pickerel. And it's actually designed for pike fishing up north in the northern United States and Canada. So people use these for pike and muskie. Same exact uh, design on all three of them. You got the shallow running bill that causes them to run about 12 inches below the surface of the water and all three of them float. Uh, this one here retails for about $7. This one's a little bit more expensive at $8.99. And then the big one here is usually $11.99. So uh, as with most lures, as they get bigger, the price also gets a little bit bigger too. But yeah, this is what we're gonna be using right here. All right, so now that you've seen exactly what we're gonna be using today, I don't have too much more to discuss. I got the stuff packed up, got the kayak in the car. We're gonna see what we can do with these original Rapala floating minnows today. Hopefully we catch a lot of fish. Hopefully we encounter some big fish. And hopefully you guys enjoy this video. If you do, give me a big thumbs up down below, drop a comment and subscribe. But for now, let's get out on the water. All right, guys, let's get this challenge underway. I'm super excited for this one. Starting off with a little uh, F7 right here of the Rapala. And we got some windy conditions out here. It's all right, I'm gonna power through, take advantage of this nice day, 84 degrees. Ah, oh, man, it's been a while since I've got on some decent crappie, so I'm excited for this one. Just gonna try to climb the ladder up through these Rapalas from smallest to largest, like I said in the intro. And after that, we're gonna be free to use whatever we want, but I think these Rapalas are gonna get bit today and I think we're gonna get some good fish. Should be a fun one out here. I'm running this on a little four pound line set up. This is the same pole you guys have seen me use for the white perch videos. Super, super light, so any fish we get on here is gonna be a fighter. And if we get something big, it's really gonna be a fight. Reason I'm using this is for the castability with such light lures right here, you gotta be able to have a light set up to cast them out there. See how that water's feeling. Ooh, it's warming up. 
It is definitely warming up. That feels pretty good, man. If Delaware waters weren't so freaking nasty, I'd be taking a swim right now. I'm thinking these crappy are gonna be up close to structure. That's what we're targeting today is the crappy. It's really what I wanna get on. Of course, I'll be happy with any fish that bites out here, but I've had some really, really good days of fishing for crappy on this lake. Better than anywhere else, to be honest with you. I've had days of catching 50, 60 crappy like it was nothing. We got one, there we go. Right off the structure and it's a crappy. Yes, sir, they're biting. <laughs> All right, I got slammed in there just a second ago and I threw it back in there right by the structure. We've already knocked out the first Rapala of the day. This little perch colored right here, F7. Really light one, but we got our first crappy and he's got those spawning colors on him right there. That's a great, great sign for our prospects of the day. Let's go. See you, bud. You know, I'm so confident that I'm gonna be able to complete this challenge with ease with all the different sizes. I'm gonna keep this one on for a little bit longer, see how many more I can catch on it. And crappy are a breed of fish that like to school up. So if you find one, chances are there's some other ones over there too. Right off that wooden structure, yes sir. There's another one. All right, maybe we're gonna have a great day today. Another beautiful black crappy. That thing is all spawned up. Look how black that thing is. I used to think that these were black crappy and the lighter ones were white crappy. It's actually incorrect. They're all black crappy in Delaware for the most part, except for a couple ponds here and there, but the majority are black crappy. And most of them, when they spawn, they get this very black coloration on them in the males which is what we have right here. See that? Look at that beautiful dark coloration. They get that darker coloration during the spawn. And right now, apparently we're in the midst of the spawn. Two right off the same piece of structure. There he goes. <laughs> Let's go. Gonna be a good day. Gonna be a good day. There's one, there we go. Oh, we flipped off. Does that count? Comment down below if that counts because I'm trying to get to 50 fish today. Beautiful thing about these crappy is they absolutely wreck your lures. I mean, they hit them so hard, especially when you get those bigger ones that are upwards of a pound. Man, oh man, hard to beat for that size. There's one out in the middle here. Feels a little bit bigger, maybe not. See, this one's a female, because it's got that light pattern, or it's a male that hasn't spawned yet. But man, we are getting into them right now. Really getting into them. It's only been about five minutes out here. We're slamming them. Third one landed so far. And these Rapalas, dude, I'm telling you, the best crappy lures, in my opinion, that you can use in the spawn. That was interesting, that last one hit out here, kind of in the middle first two I got off a of structure but like I said when they're going crazy at this time of year you can find them just about anywhere oh absolutely murdered it dude what is that little bass <laughs> flipped off right there but man out in the middle I knew we were gonna get a few bass today and that will not be the last bass that we see on the end of the line today Fish are fired up. This warm weather has got them going bonkers. Looks like I'm not the only one slaying them either. Maddie over there is filming an episode of his own that either came out before this video or after this video. And I see him tossing fish back into the water. Yup, 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 yup. Little dink. Smallest one of the day, but this is a fantastic sign. The way these things are hitting is reminiscent of how it was two, three years ago when I was out here just slamming them, cast after cast. I legit, I'm not even kidding you guys, I keep a track of every fish I catch on my phone. And I had three days, 
in a row where I came out here and I landed almost 200 fish between those three days. So today feels just like one of those days to me. The one thing I will say about these Rapalas, the hooks are not the greatest. So we are gonna lose our fair share of fish. I just hope we can land those big ones that will undoubtedly be hitting these baits today. Yep, right off the structure again. This is insane, guys. Literally insane. They're on every piece of structure in this pond right now. Oh, he splashed me in the face. <laughs> it's all right, little guy, I'm gonna get you back. There we go. It's our fifth one in the boat. So we're five for seven on bites so far. Landed five. Had seven hit, that's not bad at all. I'll take that ratio. Crazy thing is right now, we've been catching these fish in a spot where I normally don't have hardly any luck at all on this lake. And we're having all this success. I haven't even hit up the good spots yet. It's crazy. I don't even have too much time to be out here, which sucks, because I gotta run Maddie back home uh, for something he has tonight. But we're gonna do our absolute best to make it count in the time we have and so far we're doing it. Right there, right there, right there. <laughs> I literally hit it right off of that log and then he slammed it right next to me. Number seven on the day. I actually just caught one off camera, right off the same structure, about the same size. So now we have seven. All on this little F7, Rapala floating minnow, man. Just getting it up close to this structure. These fish are hammering it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is so much fun. That's a bluegill, second species. You guys saw what just happened. I cast up in that tree. It was hung over the little branch right there. I was hung up. I dangled it out of there, let it hit the water, and it dropped into a prime location for this little panfish guy right here. Nice little bluegill, nice to see you. Second species, these are multi-species baits right here, these Rapalas. And they will catch a lot of fish. They will catch a lot of small fish. They will catch a lot of big fish. Just gotta put in the time to find them. I'm also seeing panfish hitting on top water. I can tell it's either bluegills or crappies coming up to the surface and eating little bugs and insects and all that kind of good stuff right off the surface. There is a technique that I can use with this bait that I've done in the past and you'll see it right here. Hits the water like so. And then you just give it a couple of pops, kind of use it as a little top water plug like that. And then you can bring it under the water and start your retrieve. Or you can just keep twitching it on the top because it is a floating bait. And I've caught plenty of crappie, plenty of bluegills, plenty of bass even off top water with this thing. So it's a very, very versatile bait. And maybe we'll be able to get one straight off top water today. All right, so for the sake of the challenge, I went ahead and put away the little F7 and we have upgraded to the F9. Different color pattern here. This is more of a classic minnow. And this is probably, I'm not sure exactly, but I'm gonna guess three and a half, four inch bait right here. So this is definitely a bigger profile. We have a chance for some bigger fish on this now. And we're gonna see if we can keep climbing the ladder with this challenge. I'm sure we will be able to catch something on here. Just a matter of how long it's gonna take and what it's gonna be, so. Let's get casting with this thing using the same exact retrieves, same type of strategy as the previous lure, since it is the same lure, just a little bigger and a little different color. Cast different too. But man, this action on this one, the wobble is just ridiculous. I mean, it, it really, really wobbles compared to the last one. This one could get us into some trouble if we hook something big, because I could definitely see this lure hooking into a larger bass or a pickerel or even a giant crappy that could test my skills with this tiny, tiny setup right here. That's a problem that I would welcome though. 
Never gonna turn down a fight with a big fish. Oh, this is nice, whatever it is. And he's in the stick. Oh, don't break me off. This is nice. This is nice. What are you? Ooh, what are you? Pickerel? Oh yeah, pickerel, baby. <laughs> oh yeah. Don't go in the stick. Don't go in the stick. He's in the stick. Uh, let's hope we can get him. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, I hope he doesn't break me off. I don't know where he is. Oh my gosh. He's still low in there, I think. Oh yeah. He's on there, but he's all wrapped up. I've never caught a pickerel in this pond before, so if we could land this thing somehow. He is really wrapped up in there and he's pulling hard. Let's see. I think I see him. Oh, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. I see movement down there. Come on, help me out. I'm trying to help you out. Get out of there. Uh, I tried to keep him away from all this, but he wasn't having any of it. Let's try the old paddle trick. I got him out. Hey, let's go. Paddle trick works. Don't go back in there, I swear. <laughs> there we go. I knew we'd get something with a little bigger size on him. Whoa. Got to be careful with these guys. Especially with those trebles. All right. Perfect. A little bit of pickerel action. Oh yeah, he wasn't even hooked that well either, but there we go. Big set of chompers on this guy. Nice, about a 20 incher I'd say. He wanted to get out of here, and I didn't mind that he did. Heck of a fight with that guy. He took me through a ton of sticks, man. That was an adventure. This has always been a good time of year for pickerel fishing for me. I never really used to fish too much in the winter with the exception of this year. So getting them at this time of year was usually my best season for them. I've always done pretty well with them this time of year. So we've knocked out the F9 right here, got the job done in a matter of minutes, and we're gonna switch over to my little heavier setup with six pound line, a little bit more backbone on this rod, and we're gonna throw that F13 and see if we can knock that out and complete this challenge. Then we can use whatever the heck we want. There it is right there, about a five inch bait, three nice treble hooks, same silver color that we just caught the pickerel on. I'm sure the pickerel would have hit that one as well, the uh, F13 if I threw it in front of his face, but we needed that one to knock out the F9 and he did. So let's see what we can get on this F13. Let's see if we can put this challenge behind us and then just focus on catching the most fish that we can. Look at this thing right here. Oh yeah. Big old classic pike bait. And musky, people use these for musky too. Thing has got a serious action to it. Completely silent too, there's no rattles in here. See how long it's gonna take us to get bit on this thing. There we go. Been a while, man. Been a while. Forgot to tighten up my drag again after that uh, pickerel. But man, look at the black coloration on this guy. That is picture perfect. Beautiful spawning crappy. Look at that. Let's get some good lighting. Check that out. You're not going to find a prettier fish than that, man. Get on out of here. Go make a giant. 
so we're now into the double digits with eight crappie, one pickerel, and one bluegill landed in the boat. Saw a little ultralight day out here. Spook something, you guys see that? <laughs> what in the world? Oh, I still forgot to tighten my drag, but we got whatever the heck jumped probably. Maybe not. Another beautiful black crappie. Wow, we are just slamming these spawners right here. This one may be the blackest yet. Oh my gosh. Another picture perfect spawning crappie. That is second to none right there. Look at that coloration. Still looking for a big one, but when you're catching fish that pretty, you really don't care how big they are. There we go, another one. You guys see the structure right under the water right here? This is one of my favorite spots, if not my favorite on the entire pond. Got this whole log coming out right here and most people never even see it. But being in a kayak, that's the beauty of it. You can see all the underwater structure up close and personal. We'll release this guy right back down where he came. But uh, yeah, you can really see things that other people can't when you're this close to the water. I mean, I'm basically sitting on the water right now. That's how I knew to cast right there from previous experience here. There's something else. Another black crappie or is that a bluegill? That's a bluegill, second one of these. I think these may be uh, spawning right now as well. He's peeing all over me, but that's a nice male bluegill right there. Really nice colors. I gave up on it. Oh, something hit it right when it hit the water on top water. You see that? Bluegill literally ate it on top water. I had a feeling that was gonna happen today. I've been seeing a blow up guys. I was telling you earlier. Right when it hit the water, that thing came up and absolutely smacked it. Third bluegill on back-to-back -back cast. Another one, three casts in a row. Seems a little better too. I think it's another bluegill though. Yep, we have found the bluegill. Three bluegill on three consecutive casts. Check that out, epic. We have found the mother load of bluegill. Let's see if we can get another on top. Oh, he just hit it and he took it. Yes, let's go, four in a row. Literally four bluegills in a row, two of which are on top water. This one's a little female. That is some epic fishing right there. Even though it's small fish, top water on this little thing, it just... Oh. Dude, I had one, but the streak ends at four. Ah, uh, I didn't let him eat it. I just yanked it right out of his face, but that was a pretty cool little streak we had right there. Four casts in a row. Epic, man. Just got slammed again. And he came back. Five out of six ain't bad, huh? Big bluegill. Oh, that's the king of the bluegill right there. That is the king. He is a fat one, dude. Holy cow. This thing is like a freaking pancake. Look at him. Whew. I mean, I got big hands and this thing is about as big as my hand. Hopefully you guys can see him pretty good. Oh yeah. It's about an eight inch right there and he's just so round. I mean, look at the size of that thing. Five bluegill on six casts.